Hi, I'm Lee Lee from the University of Washington. Today I'm going to talk about dissecting the locus ceruleus arousal circuitry in anesthetic emergence. First, an introduction. Understanding the mechanism of anesthetic emergence is very important because currently emergence is a passive process. And if we're able to develop drugs that can actively facilitate emergence, we may be able to reduce some of the perioperative issues such as airway obstruction, respiratory insufficiency, and delirium. The neural circuit that I study is the locus ceruleus, or the LC, which is a group of noradrenergic neurons that projects widely in the brain. It has a well-known role in modulating arousal. Previous studies have shown in mice that cannot produce norepinephrine, emergence from volatile anesthetics is delayed. Similarly, if LC is activated, then behavioral emergence can be expedited. However, the neural circuit mechanism of how LC modulates anesthetic emergence is still unclear. To address this issue, I use a mouse model of anesthetic emergence in which I can express a fluorescent calcium sensor, GCAMP6S, uh, to be used as a proxy for neural activity. And I can implant an optical fiber to specifically monitor LC activity in this manner. The, Schematic on the right basically shows the experimental setup where I can deliver anesthesia at the same time perform photometry recording. First, I looked at LC activity during anesthetic emergence. These mice were anesthetized in 1.3% ISO or about a MAC for these mice for 20 minutes before transfer to room air. I used the return of writing reflex as a behavioral endpoint for emergence. And this example trace basically shows LC activity during emergence. And you can see near the time of the return of writing, uh, there is significant increase in LC activity. And this is quantified here on the right for 10 different mice. Next, I looked at a specific projection, the LC to medial thalamus uh, during anesthetic emergence. And I'm interested in the medial thalamus because it contains several weight promoting nuclei which could potentially uh, serve as a, a way that the LC uh, can mediate its effect on arousal. So um, similar as before GCAMP was expressed in the LC um, but in this case I implant two optical fibers one in the LC one in the medial thalamus. I'm able to perform simultaneously simultaneous recording in both areas. And this is shown in traces on top, one for the cell body, one for the terminal um, at baseline, during isoflurane, and after. Focusing specifically on emergence, you can see again at the time of writing, there is significant increase in LC uh, activity at the cell body. Um, if you look at the terminal, you also see increase in LC activity, but that uh, there's a change in the slope of activity that is occurring at the time of writing. And then finally, a separate experiment uh, where I express a fluorescent norepinephrine sensor in the medial thalamus, um, I'm able to show increased norepinephrine release leading up to the writing re uh, response. Um, then I wanted to test the sufficiency of this circuit to induce arousal under anesthesia. Uh, for these experiments, I injected norepinephrine in the thalamus, injected optical genetic uh, activators in the LC, and then implanted the fiber in the medial thalamus as well as implanted an EEG device. And the graphs here show the EEG spectrogram on top and the norepinephrine activity trace on the bottom. You can see under anesthesia the um, there's an appearance of a delta band uh, in the EEG. You also see depression of the norepinephrine uh, activity. Um, and then at this time, I'm able to induce norepi release in the medial thalamus with optostimulation. stimulation, but you can see that does not correlate to any significant desynchronization, desynchronization of the EEG. So in conclusion, the return of writing reflex from isoflurane anesthesia is associated with increased 
neural activity um, at the cell body as well as at the mediothalamic terminals and is associated with increased neuroepi release in that region. However, my premium data suggests that this circuit, the LC2 mediothalamus, may not be sufficient to induce cortical arousal under anesthesia, but more work needs to be done on the sufficiency um, as well as necessity of the circuit uh, in anesthetic emergence. I would like to thank the lab, especially Michael, for his mentorship and support, the department for giving me protective research time, my collaborator, Yuan Li from Peking University, who uh, gave some of the constructs, and then FAIR for funding. Thank you.